Swifter, welcome back. It's Professor Gallagher, and this is our first app in the series to build a to-do list app in Swift UI. We're going to up our game with this app, learning many more intermediate and advanced concepts, and we'll learn better app design and code organization as well. Now, even though we're going to be learning a lot in this series, we'll bite off just a bit at a time so it's not too overwhelming. And in this first lesson in this series, we're going to cover the basics of using the navigation stack and navigation links to navigate to new iOS screens in Swift UI. We'll navigate using standard navigation links and with buttons, and we'll show how to navigate back automatically with a built-in back button and how to hide that button and override this programmatically with the environment dismiss variable. Let's navigate to big learning. So let's start Xcode and create a new project. Click create a new Xcode project. Always exciting. And as usual, this is a new iOS app. Press return. Project name should be to do list, no spaces. I'm going to write that in upper camel case. And this is, of course, a Swift UI app. Press return. Make sure create git repository is checked. Click create. I'll resize my screen, hide the inspectors, choose iPhone 14 Pro for my device, and let's get to it. Now, since we're going to be working with multiple project files in this project, I'm going to change the name of the generic content view that Xcode gives me to something that I think is more descriptive of this app. We haven't done this before, but it's super easy to do. In the content view file, I'm just going to right click on the name content view just to the right of struct. I'll select refactor, then rename Xcode folds to show me everywhere that this name is mentioned. Then I can type the new name. Since this is going to hold my to-do list view, my list of to-do items, I'm just going to rename this to-do list view, all one word, upper camel case, press return. And not only did this rename things in my code files, it also renamed the file in my project navigator. Nice. We see it renamed here in the struct. And if I head over to the app file to-do list app, we can see where it used to say content view inside the window group. It now creates a new to-do list view. Cool. So back over to to-do list view, the only thing that didn't change are the comments. You don't need to change those, but if you want, you can just copy the name from the struct, paste it over the comment to complete the renaming, and now let's build. I'll size to fit my preview, and now let's create code that will navigate to a new view when clicked. Now if you want to do this, navigate to a new screen, then we need to wrap our code that will handle navigation inside what's called a navigation stack. Now some older tutorials and examples might mention navigation view, but this has been deprecated, and the navigation stack is the standard starting in iOS 16, so we'll assume that our app will only run on devices of iOS 16 or above. Now code completion says with navigation stack that this is a view that displays the root view, that's where we start navigating from, and enables you to present additional views over the root. That's what we want. So press return to accept this, add curlies, cut out our vStack, paste it between the navigation stacks curlies, and we'll cut out the generic globe image. We don't need that. Now to actually navigate to a view, we need to wrap the name of the view we want to navigate to inside of a navigation link, which is inside of our navigation stack. So stack first, which we added, then enter a navigation link. We've got lots of options in here. Choose the one that says destination and label. Code completion says that it creates a navigation link that presents a destination view, just what we want. Press return to accept this, and I'll press return to get the trailing closure formats. Now this first part is where we put in our destination. Now we can add any view as our destination, even something as simple as a text view. So we'll do that to start out. But whatever we have in here is going to present in its own separate screen. So I'm just going to enter text, passing in, welcome to the new view. Then in the curlies below this, we're going to give the label to our link. Now let's start by making a simple text view as the link. We can get fancier in just a bit. And in text, I'm going to pass in show the new view. And I forgot to delete my hello world text down here. I don't need that. And we see by default, iOS highlights the navigation link in blue. This is the default accent color. It also uses with buttons. So click this and hey, I see that a new screen migrates in from the right. I'm welcome to my new view. That's the view that we set up in the destination curlies area of the navigation link. I get this cool back button automatically in the upper left hand corner. Click that bad boy and you're back to where you started. Congrats, Swifter. You are now multi-screen navigating. Now we can jazz up our label if we want. It used to be harder to work with buttons in a navigation link, but now it's much easier. All we need to do down here in the label area is to set up whatever we want to put in as our button label. So I'm going to add an image above the text view. I'm going to pass in the system name using the string I-E-Y-E -E in lowercase. 
I get my little eye icon showing up. And one of the ways SwiftUI has made navigation links easier is that we can now treat our label as if they're a button. We can add a button style below the navigation link curlies. I'll do that with dot button style, passing in dot border prominent, and look at that. We get a navigation link, which is now a button. Click this. We continue to move our text view to the new screen. Nice. Now our destination view is just this generic text view, but let's make this a richer destination view screen and let's extract this view and put it in our own file so that we can better work with this as a separate screen. Extracting complex views into their own file is something you'll see developers do to better organize their code and make things easier to work with. So I'm gonna command click on the text view, make sure you're clicking on the one that's in the destination area of your navigation link the part up top, and I'm going to select Extract Subview. Subview extracted below. We've done this before. The new subview is generically named Extracted View. Let's rename this. I'm going to right click on Extracted View, select Refactor, Rename. We see the folding in Xcode says that this is going to rename the call and the struct definition below what we want. I'm going to rename this to Detail View upper camel case since this is a struct which is a type and upper camel case is the standard developers in swift use for types then press return and view renamed and now let's move this new detail view to its own separate file so i'm going to find the struct definition below highlight it and cut it out with a command x then let's create a new view file to hold this view so i'm going to put this right below my to-do list view file i'm going to right click on that file in the project navigator select new file and since we're creating a file to hold a swift ui view select swift ui view from the options here Click next. I'll name this new file detail view, upper camel case, the same as the view that I just extracted. Click create and we see a file that has the generic detail view struct. It's got a hello world text view in there and a preview provider down below, which handles the display of the view in the preview. Now I'm gonna leave the preview provider code alone for now. I'm gonna highlight this struct above it though, and I'm gonna command V to paste over this generic detail view with a detail view that we cut out from the prior file. And in the preview, we now see our very generic text view, but it's inside of our own separate iOS screen. Cool. Now, if we head back to the to-do list view and look in the live preview, we can still click the button to navigate to this new view, even though we're in the to-do list view file. Nice. So we'll return to the to-do list view file whenever we want to simulate our app running from when it starts, since this is the first file in our app. But for now, let's head back to our detail view file and build a snazzier detail view. So inside the body, I'm going to add a V stack with curlies. Then I'll cut out the text view and paste it inside the V stack curlies. Then above the text view, I'm going to add an image with system name Swift, all lowercase. We'll make this resizable and scale to fit and set the foreground color to orange. We're very familiar with these steps from our earlier apps. I'm going to add some padding down below the V stack. I'm going to change the text in the text view to read, you are a Swifty legend. Give this a dot font modifier of dot large title. I'll set the dot multi-line text alignment to dot center. And this isn't showing in the preview because I forgot to delete the placeholder between the parens and the padding. Default is fine, so I'm just going to delete this between the parens. And the screen is looking sharper. We now have a V stack, an image, and a text view. So now I'm going to head back to the to-do list view file. I'm going to run the preview from here. I can see my app navigation works fine. Our snazzy new view is showing. Nice. Now, the next thing you might want to do in some of your apps is remove the back button from the upper left and simply rely on buttons to make your navigation happen. Now, this isn't what we're going to be doing in our final to-do list app, but I want to make sure that you've got the skill down before we move on. So first, let's head back to the detail view file. And all we need to do to hide the back button is add a modifier below our V stack with a dot navigation bar back button hidden modifier. Code completion says this hides the navigation bar back button from the view. Yep, that's what we want. Press return. The default is to hide this so nothing passes between the parens. But if we head back to the to-do list view and check the preview from the beginning, we see there is now no back button in the detail view, which is cool but we've got no way to navigate back. So let's add this in a custom button. So now under my text view in the detail view, I'll add spacer and a button. The option with title and action is fine. For the title, I'll just write get back and press return on the action to get the trailing closure. But we need to do a bit of setup here. Navigating back isn't super straightforward, but the steps are the same anytime you'll need to do this when you don't have a back button. 
First, inside the struct, we're going to create a variable with an at sign environment property wrapper. So enter at environment, then right after this, no space in between parentheses, we'll write backslash dot dismiss, all lowercase, no spaces. So this will create a way for us to dismiss our current screen. And we'll need to set this to a private var and we'll name this dismiss, again, lowercase. Now this is admittedly a really weird variable set up in Swift. Swift UI sets this particular variable up so it's called like a function. So down between the curlies of the button action, we'll write dismiss, same as above, lowercase, but follow this with open and close parentheses just like a function. And those are the two lines we need to write to dismiss a screen in Swift UI. Follow these steps like a recipe anytime you need to do this. So now let's try this out. And just to remind you, the keyboard shortcut to toggle the project navigator open and closed is just command zero. Head back to the to-do list view, click the show a new view button. We'll navigate to the detail view and we see a get back button down below. Does this work? Let's click it. And look at that you swifty skilled one. You're programmatically navigating back to an earlier view. Nice work. So now I'm gonna head back to my detail view file and I'll add a button style of border prominent to the get back button just to snazz it up a bit. And you'll almost always see developers name this variable dismiss with lowercase as a standard. But the actual dismiss part is this bit between the parens of the environment variable. So I can actually change the lowercase dismiss the variable name here, for example, to whatever I want. So if I want to call it get back, then I need to change the button action to get back as well with parentheses after it. But if we head back to the to-do list view and run this app from the beginning, that works fine too. But I'm going to head back. I'm going to make sure that I change this to dismiss because again, that's what you'll see most of developers use. So now that we know about navigation stacks, navigation links, and the environment dismiss variable, this is a good place for us to take a break. In our next lesson, we're going to cover lists in Swift UI, various ways to format lists, and how to pass static data from one screen to another. Keep hacking, Swifter. I'm proud of your progress. Code on.